Dear viewers all over the world, this is Go Against the Tide TV channel, the voice of patriotic biblical Christians from Poland. We are a dynamically developing community of Polish patriots and Christians. We've been broadcasting since uh, 2008 in Polish. For the last uh, two years, we've been transmitting live with 30,000 viewers per day. And now we are starting a new TV channel for all those of you who don't speak Polish, but would like to know the truth about what is really going on in Poland. We will expose fake news about Poland. We will tell you who is who in our country and we will work hard to make Poland great again. You probably never heard of these two men, but I'm sure they will very soon be frequent guests in your homes. Let me introduce them. Marian Kowalski. One of the most popular online political commentators in Poland, he is a fiercely anti-communist, patriotic conservative who ran for presidency in Poland in 2015. All his life, he has been fighting against political correctness. He now opposes the idea of new Silk Road, which could spell the domination of communist China over the entire world. And Paweł Chojecki, the most popular pastor in Poland, the founder and editor-in-chief of Go Against the Tide TV. He is well known for combining the message of the Bible with patriotism, politics and economy. A reformer and a politician, he is hated by those who hate the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he isn't bothered by that at all. These two are an explosive blend. This is the first project of this kind in Poland since the times of the Reformation in the 16th century. We want to put Christianity back into politics. Our motto is God, Honor, Fatherland. I need to add here that they both supported Donald Trump and believe in his victory, despite the fact that almost no one in Poland believed in Donald Trump's success. We believe that Donald Trump will make America great again. And with God's help, we aim to make Poland great again too. Let's get started. Welcome to Make Poland Great Again. I'm Eunika Hojecka. This is the first episode of our program on Go Against the Tide TV. With me now are Marian Kowalski and Pastor Paweł Hojecki. We will talk today about the reasons behind government reshuffle in Poland. In Poland, the ruling party is law and justice, and until now we thought it is an anti-communist party, but last December its leadership forced the resignation of Mrs. Szydło's government, and a few days ago its best minister, the defense minister, was fired, a staunch supporter of Poland's alliance with the United States under Donald Trump. Antoni Macierewicz. Why did this happen? One of the main reasons was that Antoni Macierewicz, against the wishes of other ministers, blocked the allocation of land for the Silk Road transshipment facilities near the Polish capital city. Many ministers talk about the necessity of cooperation with communist China and the Silk Road is meant to end in Poland with a kind of major transshipment junction from where it would branch out in other directions. And Antoni Macierewicz said he would just refuse land for this investment. And I think this was a tangible reason for all this is about who is going to control the Polish territory. The European Union has been managing here, and clearly the Silk Road project is becoming coherent with that of the European Union. The two aim for cooperation, but some Polish patriots, including us, suggested that Poland should, especially now under the current ruling party that took over two years ago, should form a strategic alliance, political, military and economic alliance with the US, as Donald Trump won the election. 
Pastor Paweł Hajecki, why did this happen? Why was Antoni Macierewicz fired from the government? To understand what has just happened, we have to go back to 1989. This was when the world heard probably the greatest lie about Poland, possibly in the last several hundred years, namely that communism collapsed in Poland. This was as if today you dressed up the Iranian Ayatollahs in Western suits, they would still hold power still have the army, still have their secret services, and they would still have their revolutionary guard, which they would now call the forces of progress or the forces of democracy. So they would merely change their clothes and still control Iran, and they would say, we have democracy now, the Islamic regime of Ayatollahs has collapsed. Exactly this happened in Poland in 1989. You could say communists changed changed their suits, called themselves Democrats, and still controlled Poland. And what has happened just now is the legacy of that unresolved struggle back then. In fact, there is an ongoing struggle of two camps in Poland, Polish patriots versus the communists, who are either answerable to Moscow, that is Russia, or to Berlin, that is Germany. So the developments you are talking about, the dismissal of Prime Minister Szydło, and later the dismissal of Minister Antoni Macierewicz, who brought American troops to Poland, these events are nothing else but the return to the policy of submission to Germany and Russia. Would you say that the removal of Prime Minister Szydło was carried out just for the purpose of eventually removing the Defense Minister Antoni Macierewicz? This couldn't be done in the open because Antoni Macierewicz was a man with the best anti-communist credentials in this government, for he has been fighting communism since the 1970s. He is a man who has remained loyal to the leader of the ruling party, Jarosław Kaczyński, since the 1990s. He was also the most merited member of the previous law and justice government in 2005. If he had been attacked directly, it would have have caused quite a stir. He is the best minister, with excellent background, a loyal man. Why is he sacked? So this had to be carried out under a guise, so to speak. In the morning, Prime Minister was defended in the Parliament, for the opposition demanded her resignation. She got flowers from her colleagues. The opposition was overwhelmingly outvoted. And later in the day, she just stopped being Prime Minister. A new Prime Minister was proposed, who then had several weeks to prepare the public opinion for changes in the government, and all this was done for the sole purpose of removing Antoni Macierewicz from his defense minister's post. You can see very clearly there were no other reasons. There was no increase in social discontent with Prime Minister Szydło and Minister Macierewicz. Law and Justice, the ruling party, had a sky-high popularity of around 50%. And it happened at that very moment, just when all was going well, when Minister Macierewicz announced more American troops to come to Poland, new defense systems for the Polish army, that is the Patriot system, and submarines capable of carrying nuclear missiles. He announced all of that, and the increase of Polish troops. So the government and the ruling party were at the big development, with the massive support of the Poles, and at this very moment there was a gut. The ruling party is effectively dismantling what has been developing so well in this area. It wasn't the Poles, the voters, who forced this, but the two capitals of hostile empires, Germany and Russia forced Jarosław Kaczyński and President Duda to betray the Poles, betray Poland's allies and their fellow party members, Prime Minister Szydło and Minister Macierewicz. We are joined by our Taiwan correspondent Hanna Shen. Why was Defense Minister Antoni Macierewicz sacked? We have a globalist agenda. We will now save the whole planet. 
on the one hand, make America, make your country great, and on the other hand, the globalist agenda. Trump's idea is that sovereign countries have to take care of themselves, they have the right to fight for their national interests and follow their values. The struggle is on this level, between these two ideas. On the one hand, a globalist world is being built, and on the other, that of sovereign nations. And the question for the Polish politicians now is which side they want to be on. Antoni Macierewicz was the man who ensured Poland opted for the alliance with the US. He spoke the same language, he talked about the same threats as the United States. He was the only government official who spoke about the Russia-China naval exercise in the Baltic Sea. Only he talked about it. He was the only politician who blocked the Chinese investment near the city of Łódź. Only he saw eye to eye with the Americans to break this alliance so that Poland would join the globalist agenda President Macron spoke about, Macierewicz had to be removed. And the leftist European elites are very happy about it now. It's their victory. No wonder when they talked about the reshuffle in the Chinese media, just two names were mentioned. Foreign Minister Waszczykowski, which is understandable since a foreign minister is mentioned in their media most often, and the other name was Minister Macierewicz. They were also happy about it. They explained it to the Chinese following the narrative in the European media that the reshuffle was meant to improve the ties with the European Union. The message was, calm down and don't worry, Poland is returning to the Euro-Asian alliance. Hanna Shen asked a good question, who will Poland side with now, having fired Minister Antoni Macierewicz, with Germany, Putin's Russia and Communist China, or with the free world under the leadership of Donald Trump and the United States. I think the ambitions of Polish patriots to make Poland a sovereign, independent, strong and just country from which the Poles don't need to migrate in search of jobs. These dreams have probably been shattered for a very long time to come, if not forever. Today we have to realize that the European Union and the Russian-Chinese alliance are set against the United States. And this is why, at this very important location, Central Europe, a project that would boost the US global potential has been blocked. A project that would at last bring Poland a loyal ally for Germany has always strived to dominate Poland and Russia to conquer Poland. And today the tool for their schemes is the Silk Road project which attracts economically and also politically all post-communist and leftist or liberal dominated countries in Europe and Asia. The United States could find a partner in Poland, the way Japan or South Korea are in East Asia and Israel is in the Middle East. Poland with its location would be ideally poised to keep Russia and Germany at bay and bring to a halt the expansion of the Silk Road. Unfortunately, the Polish national interest and that of the free world, along with the plans of Donald Trump's United States, have just been frustrated. Who will Poland stand by now? The free world and the United States or the communist or neo-communist world. It is enough to look at the family and ideological background of the new prime minister who has been inserted to replace Prime Minister Szydło. Mateusz Morawiecki, the son of a once fairly well-known opposition activist in Poland. 
Both are well-known leftist globalists. So Hanna Shen, a Pole living in Taiwan, has very aptly put the reshuffle in Poland in a larger global context. For the UN is planning a global pact for migrants and refugees in 2018. To właśnie w ONZ planuje się w roku 2018, czyli bieżącym, strategię a strategy for the management of large-scale human migratory movements. Hence our strong support for the changes planned in the United States by Donald Trump, who is against the migration which would flood the Christian United States and destroy its Christian, biblical and patriotic character. The same thing is being done in Europe through the wave of migrants. We call them Islamic invaders. And you can see three forces involved here. Russia is acting as a beater, as in hunting, provoking wars and unrest in the Middle East. The chase is coming mainly from Syria. When Russia got involved in the Syrian conflict, the wave of migrants surged. So while Russia is doing the chase, Germany keeps inviting the barbarian hordes that are meant to destroy old Europe. It was Chancellor Merkel who said exactly this, come over, willkommen. Welcome. And the third player is the Vatican. Pope Francis provides justification by lying that it is our Christian duty to destroy nation-states and accept the hordes of Islamic barbarians who are set to destroy our way of life. Also, for this reason, Morawiecki was appointed new prime minister as he is submissive to the schemes of globalists, heir to a leftist and globalist family tradition. Prime Minister Szydło was dismissed by her own colleagues, denied Islamic migrants entry to Poland. She rejected the EU's dictates over Poland, but Mateusz Morawiecki, the new Polish Prime Minister, is following a different policy. Foreign media, such as the Washington Post, believe Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki has reshuffled his cabinet to warm ties with the EU. Would you agree with that? The commentators in Poland are saying that improving the image of Poland within the EU EU was the primary reason behind the changes. I don't think our country should be so concerned with its image, for the reality is that Poland would have the best image if it simply ceased to exist. Then Germany and Russia would be at their happiest. Wouldn't you like to warm ties with the European Union? The European Union does not represent the national interest of Poland. As far as migration is concerned, it attempted an assault on Poland's demographic and cultural integrity, such as has been going on for decades in Western Europe. Today, in many European capitals, there are ghettos dominated by Muslim migrants, and these are not happy neighborhoods. Even the police are afraid to go there. Luckily, so far, we don't have any of these in Poland. This is why Poland is capable of defending its state to squall and above all is able to prevent these refugees from voting in elections. For in Western Europe some politicians are simply afraid to fall into disfavor with the Muslim minority, which is very dynamic demographically. The Washington Post says Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki met with the European Commission's head Jean-Claude Juncker and the latter's office said the two had a friendly and constructive dinner in Brussels and would be seeking to make progress on better ties by the end of February. The Washington Post correctly indicates the direction of changes, but misses 
wider scope. It is not just about warming ties with the European Union. The real score is that they want Poland to surrender to the European Union. This is why Eurocrats are setting a deadline of just a few weeks for Poland to accept their conditions. And these conditions are to take in migrants, sever transatlantic ties with the United States, and soon after that give up the Polish national currency and adopt the euro. It's not about warming, it's about surrendering to Germany which controls the European Union. The chief excuse for attacks on the Polish government with Macierewicz as defense minister from the EU institutions was that Poland is trying to reform its justice system which is a very special system. It is a system where judges promote each other to higher positions. There is no democratic supervision. They just do it within their tight-knit community. Political and democratic institutions have no bearing on them. We, the voters, have no bearing on judges, none whatsoever. But even the parliament has no influence, and even the slightest involvement of, say, justice minister in appointments, I don't even mean any systemic matters, was flatly rejected by their community. Many foreign-inspired street demonstrations were staged, and the European Union wanted to keep this system unchanged. There is no democratic country where judges appoint themselves to top judicial positions, appoint each other from within their own closed circle. Was even more important after the formal, not actual, fall of communism in Poland, the judges weren't vetted in any way. The new system kept all those holdovers who had sent patriots to communist jails. They are the people with their communist mindset intact, and many of them hail from the families of communist murderers. Their fixed mindset compels them to always act against Poland. In their daily jobs they are against the people, they pass unjust sentences and more often than not commit crimes themselves. The the justice system, just as Marian said, is totally out of control of the sovereign that is of the Polish nation. In Poland there is no such thing as the jury. Judges select one another and are answerable only to their own clique. They hail from communist families. Some of them are communist murderers who sentenced Polish anti-communists not only to jail, but also to death, and to this day they harass Polish patriots. One of the greatest opposition leaders, Krzysztof Wyszkowski, is to this day being persecuted for having revealed that Lech Wałęsa was a communist informant, codenamed Bolek. Today he is still court persecuted, even though so many years have passed since the so-called fall of communism. A contrary example is communist Germany. As you know, part of Germany was occupied by Russia until the early 1990s. When West Germany took over the communist part of Germany, East Germany, 80% of judges were replaced. 80% of communist appointed judges were removed from their offices because it was feared that in a free and democratic country they would be passing unfair sentences. In Poland, not even one judge was removed. Zero. And now, when we want to change our justice system, the communist left out Europe is blowing the whistle on us, saying democracy in Poland is under threat. Is there then any hope to stop the fall of Poland now that Prime Minister Beata Szydło and Defense Minister Antoni Macierewicz have been sacked? Right now there isn't even a single political force in Poland with a say in the forming of the government, which would make it absolutely clear where Poland Poland stands as far as its alliance are concerned. There is a talk of boosting Poland's position within the European Union, of economic cooperation with China. All this is very muddy. 
we need a clear declaration about who is to be the strategic ally of Poland. Is it going to be the Euro-Chinese-Russian project, or is it going to be the United States? There is no other alternative. The regional alliance of Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic and other countries in the vicinity could still be the area where Germany and Russia are kept apart and the Silk Road blocked. But the United States' involvement is essential here. Right now this project is about to fall apart. The Hungarian Prime Minister made it clear he won't depend on the whims of Eurocrats. He chooses Chinese investors instead. It's going to be the same old story. The whole region, and especially Poland, will remain dependent on its neighbors, which is precisely the very plan that has been carried out since the 18th century to obliterate Poland. At the same time, this is against America's interests. It is not the same if Germany, Russia, China influence Poland or if the American influence is more prominent. Germany and Russia aim to enslave and exploit Poland, while the United States could become Poland's reliable ally who would want to have a strong partner in Poland. After all, it's better to trade with a rich ally instead of pumping billions in aid into it. The power of the United States is based on the Bible and on the God of the Bible. Unfortunately, because of Poland's history and traditions, the Bible is little known in Poland. The Poles don't know the Bible, they dream of freedom, yet they don't quite understand how to achieve it. They don't understand who gives freedom, that it is Jesus Christ who liberates. This is why, for Poland to have a community that could form an alliance, not only political alliance, but also ideological or spiritual alliance with the United States, the Poles need to know the Bible. Our television and our church have been sending thousands of copies of the New Testament to those who wish to receive it. We can already see that the Poles first for truth, our party, the November 11th movement, is the first and so far the only political party in Poland ever to discard the Catholic foundations and to adopt the biblical foundations. If Poland can yield an elite based on the biblical foundations, I can rest assured about the future of Poland and its alliance with the United States. I think it should be stressed at this point that the United States was built by the Poles from the start. Generals Kościuszko and Pułaski fought in the American War of Independence. Millions of Poles were there practically from the beginning, from the time when the United States was the destination of European settlers. The Poles have been there all this time and they are a very constructive ethnic group, members of the middle class, good patriots who work hard, serve in the army, pay taxes and have civilizational ties with other ethnic groups in the United States. And what's more, in the last presidential election, when Donald Trump appealed to the polls and they were insulted by Bill Clinton in that campaign, I dare say Donald Trump owes his victory to the votes of Polish Americans. The Poles are not a nation from wherever out there. The Poles contributed in the past and continue to contribute now to America's prosperity and we would also like Poland to benefit politically, militarily and economically from the fact that so many of our fellow nationals invested their lives on the other side of the Atlantic. And my last question, who is the hope for Poland? I think that any Polish aspirations to independence will not materialize when in the United States the leftist elites are in power. 
the entire 1990s, the Clinton, Bush and Obama presidencies were marked by complete misunderstanding of European politics, which proved disastrous for the United States itself. Only the patriotic American Republican elite, represented as we see it by Donald Trump now and in the future, are capable of lending a helpful hand to the Polish cause. But we have to remember that the American national interest actually begins here, in Poland. Obviously, our hope is in the greatest of rulers, the greatest king, the greatest lord, king of kings and lord of lords, Jesus Christ. But here on this earth for nations to develop toward greater prosperity and moral growth, they have to turn to him. That's why we rooted for Donald Trump, we prayed for his victory. Marian Kowalski was the only Polish politician who said it out loud that Donald Trump is going to win this election. From this studio he was heard in Poland and among the Poles overseas. In this American president we also see hope for Christians. If the Clintons had won, the globalist agenda would have been much more advanced today. We hope God will give also our nation leaders who love Jesus Christ, who will reverse the course of our ill-fated history and make Poland great again, just as at the times of the Reformation during the Golden Age of Poland. For this reason we founded our party, the November 11th movement, on the centenary of Poland regaining independence. You watched Make Poland Great Again. We with me in the studio was Marian Kowalski, Pastor Paweł Hojecki, the explosive blend on the Polish net. Please share the link to this video, please recommend us, write in the comments what you would like us to talk about next time. Until then, goodbye.